it's uh, Sunday night. <sighs> Take that deep breath. <laughs> I hope you got everything done you wanted to this weekend. And if not, I hope you have Monday to, you know, spend to do some stuff. I was reminded um, of a phrase I like a lot. You know, a lot of people don't like Mondays, but Mondays are my favorite day of the week, probably because I almost never have to work Mondays. You know, when you work freelance, um, it seems to be that Monday is the day everyone's kind of coming back to work from the weekend and they need a day to get their bearings. And so, you know, Tuesday through Friday are usually the shoot days. But uh, I have some edits to finish, so I'll probably be working tomorrow. But I'll also be working on myself because it's all gas, no breaks, October, and we're definitely going to be working on ourselves. I hope you're working on yourself, and if you're working on something, drop a comment down below and tell me what you're working on. I'd love to talk with you or give you advice if I can, or if anybody else uh, in the community can help you out and give you advice. Hey, man, that's what we're here for. Support, you know. I watched a video um, about depression, and it pointed out how more than ever, we're like disengaged from the community. So it's like, how can we bring that in? You know, and I'm not really sure. I mean, I know the internet's not really the answer, but it is better than nothing. So make friends, make internet friends. The internet friends are better than nothing, I think. I don't know. <sighs> Sorry, just finished working out. <laughs> so I'm a little sweaty, I think. I don't know if you can tell. My hair is pretty greasy. I haven't washed it in a couple days. When you have long hair, you're not supposed to wash it every day. I don't know if you knew that. For the fellas out there who watch the ASMR, uh, you're not supposed to wash your hair every day. Who knew, right? Um, yeah. Where was I going with that? I don't know. It was just, a <laughs> just came out of nowhere. And I was like, okay, by the way, everyone should know. Don't wash your hair every day. It's not good for it. Oh man, okay, so this week, what are we doing this week? I may be working. I do have one shoot already, and I might have got a second one. That's awesome, and I might have even got a third one. Yeah, so that's uh, nice, you know, when you're feeling concerned about money, and all of a sudden these jobs just come out of nowhere, you're like, yes, I'll do that. <laughs> I need money, please. I mean, I don't, I'm not hurting for money, but like, this year has been down quite a bit um so trying to correct that as much as possible and i'm also trying to you know get all my uh fecal matter together so to speak uh gonna put it all in a bag take it to the fecal matter store i don't know if any of you watch rick and morty that's a i hate to admit that i watch rick and morty because i mean if you watch rick and morty you know this like the fan base for rick and morty is really toxic and uh even just saying that it's probably gonna get me murdered so it was nice knowing you all. It was nice uh, helping you fall asleep, but I'm going to be murdered by Rick and Morty fans soon. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, let's not talk. I like Rick and Morty. It's a great show, you know. Um, it's pretty funny. It's got good animation. But a new show that I have been watching is Ted Lasso. I don't know if I talked about this in my TV show, ASMR, a couple days ago, but Ted Lasso really good. Watch it. Um, Jason Sakitas, he's great. I like that guy a lot. Um, and speaking of, there's a bridge. There's a a uh, a writer on Twitter. Her name is Katie Delaney. If you're on Twitter, follow her. She's very funny. Um, but she wrote an episode of Rick and Morty. She wrote the heist episode of this last season. And she was a staff writer on Rick and Morty. And then she also interviewed to be a writer in Ted Lasso. And she was like almost at the job. But uh, Jason Takitas had already booked the writer's room. Sorry, Katie. I like you a lot. Your Twitter feed is good. A plus. I, I recommend Katie on Twitter. Let's see, who else do I like? Um, 
you on the list in front of your face. I like Jacko Willink. Uh, he's one of my favorite authors. But he's very intense. So if you're not an intense person, you might not uh, vibe with his like intensity. Um, who else do I like? Orange Book is a good one. It's just kind of tweets. Kind of like generic knowledge, you know? Kind of like pseudo. It's like some of them are positive and some of them are just like, you know, you gotta do the thing you gotta do, so go do it. Like, it's, it's more intelligent than that, but that's really what all the tweets boil down to. There's a lot of Twitters like that, but Orange Book is really good. Um, what else is on Twitter that I really like? I like a lot of web comics. Like Perry Bible Fellowship is a big one for me. Um, and Shen Comics, who used to be known as Owl Turd, uh, is also in Sarah Scribbles, is another one I like. So I follow them. I also follow like some movie Twitter. Um, but a lot of movie Twitter gets really toxic really quick, so I just like just have a dip of a dough in that one. Don't uh, go too hard in the movie Twitter, because uh, it gets real negative really quick. And it seems like a lot of film critique is based off like how negative can I get? And it's like you can tell, but the more negative someone is when reviewing a film, the more they have no idea what goes into making a film on any level. And so you're just like, cool. Like I don't care what you have to say because you've never made, a, you've like probably never made a collaborative art project ever. And that goes into it, and there's a lot of give and take. So unless it's like a short film, like. Those are the only really ones you could critique harshly, and even then, you have to like be like, well, they didn't really have a budget, and they really couldn't get A-list actors, so it's only ever going to be so good. But when they knock it out of the park, that was all them. So, there's that. That's a thing that you should know about filmmaking. Should I talk like that and get, like, a, like a William Shatner, or... Christopher Walken, I can't do how they do it. Obviously. <laughs> Can you imagine Christopher Walken doing ASMR? Hello, I am Christopher Walken. I can't, I can't even do it. I can't. <laughs> but it's in my head of like how we would. You're talking to me all wrong. You, you're talking to, to me all wrong. I can't, I can't do it at all, but. Oh man, that would be amazing. I would pay, I would pay five dollars to watch Christopher Walken do ASMR. Would you pay five dollars? Let's start a GoFundMe for this and get Christopher Walken to do an ASMR. But I don't know what he would do. Um, he could just, I just want him to whisper his, uh, his monologue from Pulp Fiction about the watch. And if you haven't seen that movie, well, go see it because it's like, you know, one of the greatest movies ever made. Um, and that's not just my opinion. It's like part of, it's like one of those like other movies you have to see before you die, Pulp Fiction. And Christopher Walken just has this like brief bit and it's just like a little monologue about um, Bruce Willis's character's father's watch. And that's all I'll say about it. But uh, the whole movie's great. Two thumbs. Very good. Um, yeah. So, man, we're really covering a lot of ground today. We're just kind of going all over the place. Uh, Doppler effect. Uh. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to amuse myself. Just go.
That's probably why, because I look really, I just get like this goatee, and then like some patch, you can kind of see it. It's like, there's some up here, but none really right there, none on the cheeks. Like maybe like one or two. And then just like this like, you know, 15 year old teenager trying way too hard mustache. Like that's all I can get. So it goes. If you know what that's from, bonus cool points. And if you don't know what it's from, it's from a book called Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. And you should read it because it's a really good book and it's pretty short. And there is an audible version read by James Franco. So if you like James Franco or if you just like his voice, audible.com. I don't have an audible sponsorship. I should. I read a lot of books. Um, but uh, yeah, get on Audible if you haven't. It's a great way to, to read and consume more books. Um, fiction, nonfiction. I read a lot of nonfiction. Makes me smart. Or not really. Just gives me things I can steal and copy and then people think I'm smart. That's all book reading is. It's just stealing ideas from other people. <laughs> and then you can say them and people are like, wow, how do you, how do you know that? How do you know that? And you're like, I don't know, I just thought of it because I'm so smart. But the reality is you just stole it from a book like a thief. If books are art, then stealing from them is an art theft. Don't you want to be an art thief? And wear cool turtlenecks. I think I gave myself ASMR on that one. Fun. 
it's kind of like a fun exercise in improv, and it's like, I'm really enjoying it a lot to just sit down and be like, what do I want to talk about? I'm too late, and I hit record. <laughs> I'm just like, well, hope you're doing well, because <laughs> I'm not. It's helping me learn to think on my feet better, and I think that's one of my primary reasons for doing the whisper videos, aside from like trying something new, because I made 400 videos where like I talk in like five of them. Um, I'm like, okay, let's try a different tact, because I mean, I like making the ASMRs. It's fun. Um, although I like making the no talking ones. I think those are the ones I like to watch. So that's neither here nor there. I think that's just because maybe I don't vibe with the personalities I've watched, and so I've just like, I don't like it when they talk. And I just haven't found the right people. Um, was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So it's just like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like boot camp for learning how to just like talk on my feet. Cause that's, I think that's a very valuable skill. Um, especially if you want to do other, um, I want to do other YouTube channels. You know, I wanted to do the, the movie reviewing one and I'm doing one about filmmaking. So just like those two. And then also, like, the one with, with filmmaking, I also kind of want to do, like, productivity and, like, life hack type stuff. Um, which I know is kind of like a weird mix, but, like, I don't care, whatever. Like, Matt Diavela did it. Although, Matt Diavela's videos are almost all about the productivity minimalism stuff and almost never about filmmaking anymore. So, it is what it is, I guess. Um, but I wanted to do, like, productivity, creativity, like, through the lens of an artist. Productivity through, like, productive creativity. So, that's something I'll be working on, but right now I've just been making videos about, um, video editing, uh, mostly, just to, like, build up credibility and build up an audience, and then, uh, that's phase one, was to make ten videos, which I accomplished, just to prove that I could get in the habit, um, and then phase two is starting to distribute and promote the videos more, um, which I've kind of started on, but I could do better at, um, I just need to be better at putting myself out there. And then stage three, um, which is coming up before the end of the year, I want to start making um, kind of productivity videos. But also before I do that, I'm going to do off video editing and more into like production stuff and some like random ideas that I think might be interested to people that make films and do photography. So it's kind of the four step plan. And I think once I get. I haven't decided on a number. I think somewhere between 500 and 1,000. I want to start a podcast um, and just be able to bring in... I feel like I need 1,000 because that way my channel will... Less, will like, I feel like 1,000 is, is a more concrete number if you're trying to invite guests. You know, if you don't have at least like 1,000... Like if you, I mean, 500 is still a pretty good number. Um, but I think 1,000, that fourth digit really like gives you some credibility um and then maybe at that point i could you, you need a thousand subs to monetize on youtube um so maybe at that point i could be bringing in some money and then i could pay the guests and so i could get better guests yeah i lean away from the mic to breathe in i don't know if anyone knows that reference that's from uh, a really old viral video called chocolate rain the guy uh he has a really deep voice. It's actually really good. Day, what was his name? Day, soon day, maybe, something like that. I don't remember. Day, I know Day was his first name. I wonder if he's still making videos. He got really popular for a little bit there. But he would always be like, <sighs> he's like and then it would always say, like, I lean away from the mic to breathe in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, that's the battle plan with the, uh, that channel. Um, I don't really have a battle plan with this channel. It's, just, it's always just kind of like, just make stuff. Like, make stuff. Because I want to be, especially this year, my 34th year on this earth, it's it's going towards making, like, consuming less, putting out more, even though I still have to watch like 200 movies to accomplish that goal for the end of the year. Which is like two and a half movies a day, which is a lot, but whatever. I still don't want to make stuff. I want to do more shoots. So my, one of my 2021 goals, I think, is going to be number of shoots for end clients and then number of personal shoots that weren't YouTube shoots and then number of YouTube shoots. Like, those three will be goals. I just really, like, 365 it, you know? I don't know if you're familiar with the 365 project where you do something every day. 
um, in order to get much, much better at it very quickly. Um, and I mean, no offense to you, lovely folks, but I don't know if ASMR is really improving my filmmaking skills. It's very much improving my hosting skills, my talking skills, being able to think on my feet and talk um, and improv. So for that, I'm very thankful that you, anybody watches this. Um, it's just me trying to figure stuff out. Uh, but yeah, I think even just, I don't know how long I've been doing the rambles like consistently, but uh, I feel like I've, I've gotten better at it. So there's that. Um, and, you know, it's a small win. Hey, I'm going back to one of my earlier videos. You know, look, at, look for those small wins. We're grabbing those balloons and we're pulling ourselves up. I feel much better than I did in early September. So, gratitude. I'm grateful for all of you for watching my videos. I'm grateful that YouTube exists and that I can make any money doing this, just talking at a camera. Um, just whisper. I'm not even talking. I'm whispering. I'm grateful that I have jobs that provide this insane camera. Like, I, you know, when we're looking at camera gear, I am in the 99th percentile of, of YouTubers, I'm sure with like just this, like it's a $300 microphone, like a $10,000 camera. I mean, my light's only like 200 bucks, but I have, oh, I don't even know, $5,000 worth of lighting equipment I could bring out here and just light the crap out of this. But I don't really know if it would get that much better. Maybe one day I'll do that. I'm just like, this is how I would professionally light my YouTube. I don't think it would be much better. I think it would be brighter. You know, I would, I would probably light the background and kind of do some up lights on the art and my bookcase, but I'd also have to like clean up my book, my, my desk, which is so messy, but when it's dark, you really can't tell. But I could do a, a nicer, softer, more flattering light right here. And I could do a backlight and maybe I could do some color stuff. Although this light does colors. Um, should I do, should I do color? Let's see here.
like some blue. Oh, the blue is really bright. That's some, uh, that really gives you like a good, I don't know if my camera's gonna be able to handle this like blue. It's gonna probably just oversaturate it. But if you had like a nice, so imagine like a nice soft light coming in here and this kind of blue rim. Probably not in the frame. Maybe like up and behind. But oh, so I don't know if I, I mentioned this uh, the other day about I put a filter on the lens and it causes a halation in the light. Halation is when you see um, up like where my hand is. You see all this fog. That's halation right there. So that's how you get like a dreamy look with these with these filters that go on lenses. And it also works on skin too. Um, there you go, back to regular color. Anyway, that's enough fun with lights for the day. So yeah, I hope you're doing well. If you're working on something for all all break, all gas no breaks, <laughs> walk over and drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Maybe I can help you out somehow. Anyway, uh, other than that, I just hope you're doing well. Hope you're sleeping. Hope you're hydrating. Hope you're working out, getting your getting your steps in, getting outside. You know, at least for 10, 15 minutes, getting that vitamin D. It's really important, especially right now. So until tomorrow. <laughs>